weak internal controls are the nemesis of a strong, effective, fraud-resistant, accounts-payable process. Grab a pencil and a scrap of paper and see how many of the following are in use in your organization. And as you probably can guess, I'm hoping the answer will be none, but let's see. Make sure you stick around for the last one because I know for a fact from the AP Now surveys that about 50% of you are doing the last one. Okay, welcome to Accounts Payable Soundbites, the program where we share tips and explain simple and complex accounts payable issues in short, concise soundbites. All right, let's take a look at the 10. Number one, do you allow your processes to set up new vendors or change data on existing vendors in the master vendor file? Okay, if you are doing this, you do not have appropriate segregation of duties and therefore it is a weak control. That's number one. Uh, number two, along the same line, if you do have appropriate segregation of duties set up, do you also have one person, maybe the manager, maybe the controller, or someone like that, who has access to the whole procure to pay chain in your ERP system? If you do, again, you don't have appropriate segregation of duties. Another check on the weak control list, okay? Do you have a petty cash box? Petty cash boxes, by their very nature, are weakly controlled. There's a lot of problems with them, a lot of ways that people play games. So petty cash box, a weak internal control, another one. Item number four, do you allow the returning of checks to the person who requested the payment? Now, I understand that occasionally there will be situations where you have to do it, but for the most part, if you're returning checks more than once or twice a year, you have a weak control and you want to look into ways that you don't have to do that because returning checks, not only is it inefficient for the accounts payable function, but it's a weak control, as are allowing more than the occasional rush payment. Sure, everybody's going to make a mistake. There's going to be a problem. There may even be an occasional situation where you need to make a rush payment. But if it happens more than, again, once or twice a year, you need to take a look at your processes and say, you know, what's going on here? Because this is a weak internal control. Okay. Before we get to the next five, I'd like to invite you to subscribe. It's free, completely private, and you can subscribe anytime. Also, I'd like to invite you to ring the bell next to the subscribe button so you'll be notified when we post new accounts payable content, which we do two or three times a week. And by the way, you don't have to have a YouTube account to subscribe. You can subscribe if you have a Gmail account. Okay, on back to our weak internal controls. Number six, and this I know only a few people are doing, but I know it's still being done because every time I give a live class and I talk about this, there's always somebody in the corner hanging their head saying, yeah, we're still doing this. And that is having a rubber stamp with someone's signature on that anybody can stamp on checks to sign checks, okay? A weak control, if you're doing that and someone gets a hold of one of your checks and you know, manages to produce the signature just like it, you don't have much protection with the bank, okay? So get rid of those rubber stamps if you have them. The next one, and I know about 30% of the companies out there still have not adopted this new best practice, but we need to all do it. And that is verifying any change of bank account request that comes in by email. Even if that address looks like it's just exactly correct because Criminals have gotten really good in spoofing email addresses, so you must verify any change of bank account email that you receive. So if you're not doing it, another check on the weak list. Do you deactivate inactive vendors in your master vendor file at least once a year? If you're leaving them on there for two, three, four years, you're facilitating internal fraud should you have an employee who wishes to do that. So not deactivating inactive vendors in your master vendor file is a weak internal control. And we say deactivate, don't delete the information because if they come back to you at a later date, you want to have some information so you can figure out if you paid them or you didn't if they're making that requirement. Next one I know very few companies are doing and that is having a mandatory vacation policy for anyone who has anything to do with your money and that includes everybody in accounts payable. They should be required to take five consecutive days off 
then during that time period, somebody else should do their job. They shouldn't be doing their job from home. Okay. Cause if there's an ongoing fraud, they'll just keep it going with doing whatever they need to do. Okay. And now I know some people say, well, we have enough problems with people wanting to take extra vacation, but you want to make sure you get those five consecutive days in. Okay. And lastly, the biggie and probably the one that has the largest number of people not doing this correctly. If you have a corporate credit card program, do you mandate that your employees use it rather than using their own personal cards? Because if you allow them to use their own personal cards and then you reimburse them using the expense reporting mechanism, not only is that add extra work for your accounts payable folks that they don't need to do, it also facilitates all sorts of game playing. And I could talk about that. That'd be another 10 minutes and we're trying to make this a soundbite rather than an hour webinar. Okay. So how did you do? If you were successful and you weren't using any of these, a huge congratulations to you and feel free to brag about it by posting a comment below. Do you have any that you think should be on this list? Please feel free also to add them in the comment fields below. Duplicate vendors in the master vendor file are another weakness that can facilitate fraud. Episode 77 of the AP Now podcast shares a tactic everyone can use to find those duplicates. On YouTube, a link should have appeared to it to the left. Good luck.